Winter is officially here, and you know what that means. Dry, flaky, and itchy skin. But don't worry, because today I'm gonna share with you my top 10 tips to combat dry winter skin. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, living in Minneapolis, I know firsthand how dry and cold weather can significantly impact skin. And eczema, eczema flares, or new setup eczema is the most common thing I am managing for patients on a regular basis in clinic. I and my daughter also have dry skin. Eczema winters can be really challenging, and I almost feel like no skin type is safe during the winter if you live in a pretty dry, cold environment like we do. That's why I've gathered these essential tips that have been really helpful for us, for myself, and hopefully will help you and get through winter, keeping your skin healthy and hydrated. So if you enjoy more videos like this, I would love it. You can give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Tip one is add in a humidifier. And one of the reasons why we see eczema flares so much in the winter is, aside from the cold, is the dryness. And the drier environment really pulls water out of our skin, causing more dryness on our skin. This is why there's less flares of eczema in the summertime because of the humidity. And individuals that live in more humid environments tends to see less eczema. As much as we're able to do with skincare, sometimes that is just not enough. So this is where adding a humidifier centrally or at bedside can be really helpful. And if you're not able to have a central humidifier, then having one next to your bed and keeping the humidity in your bedroom higher and helping your skin repair itself as you sleep to reduce transepidermal water loss can be really helpful. And it's not just for skin. It also helps with like runny nose, crusty nose, for people that get sick, you know, especially kids, and my kids have been sick back to back. They get runny nose, it dries up in the winter, it gets crusty, it's really uncomfortable. So adding a bedside humidifier, especially in this situation, and this is a tip actually, my husband who's an ENT surgeon, he does this a lot, really helps to keep their nasal mucosa moist and actually reduces coughing from the post nasal drip. And if you're looking for a bedside humidifier, I recommend the canopy humidifier. This is small. It's really convenient to keep next to your bed to help keep your skin and nose hydrated and moisturized. It's very easy to clean, easy to operate, and it comes with a filter that you change out every six weeks and there are refillables that you can purchase and change out very easily. Tip two is consider reducing your cleansing frequency. Cleansing, I call it a necessary evil. It's one of those we must do to keep our skin healthy, but certainly can damage our skin barrier if it's not done correctly or if we overdo it. Now, every time we wash our face, wash our skin, we are removing the natural sebum, natural moisturizing factors and lipids that are all there to keep our skin protected and hydrated and healthy. So an easy switch would be like if you wash your face twice a day, which most people do, you could just consider in the morning a little spritz of water, a little bit like splash, just enough to dampen your skin so that way your skincare products can better penetrate but not do the full on cleansing with a cleanser. Similarly, if you're used to showering like two times a day, cut down to just once a day. Now, this is not for everyone. I think it's more for those who are minimalist when it comes to skincare because like if you do a lot of heavy duty masks or like you slug and you wake up the next day, you are probably still have some of that product and residue on your skin and you know, cleansing with a cleanser to remove everything so that way your skincare products can more readily penetrate, makes sense. Similarly, if you are very active, you hit the gym a lot every day and you're prone to acne, you certainly don't want to wait until the end of the day to shower. You want to kind of rinse that off with even water so that way that sweat doesn't build up and contribute to acne. So this tip isn't applicable to everyone, but see if you could make this work in your routine that may be helpful in reducing dry skin. Tip three is avoid cleansing mistakes and rethink your cleansers. So as I alluded to earlier, when we cleanse, especially with the cleanser, it certainly is, a, is important to remove all the makeup, sunscreen, sebum, but cleansers don't really discriminate from like the things that should be removed from our skin from what our skin makes naturally. So the natural moisturizing factors and lipids, it just removes everything. And this is where a right cleanser can be important because the right cleanser should effectively remove everything, but at the same time, less aggressive, so less stripping of our skin's unnatural sebum, 
or it even can deposit some hydration properties to our skin as we're cleansing. And one simple switch is instead of going with a foaming cleanser that really suds nicely, then these cleansers tend to have you know more aggressive detergents that foam and remove like buildup and sebum more readily. So it's more ideal in the summertime. But in the winter, that may be a little too much and too stripping. And so switching to a creamy cleanser that doesn't foam and at the same time may impart some hydrating properties on the skin may be more ideal for the winter. And cleansers that I recommend during the winter time are more creamy ones, starting off with La Roche-Posay, the Tularian Hydrating Gentle Face Cleanser. And this is a great one if you have dry, sensitive skin and you don't put a lot of products or makeup on your face. It is, for the most part, pretty effective at cleansing while at the same time keeping your skin hydrated and almost imparts this hydrating film on your skin after you are done cleansing. Ingredient wise, it contains ceramide 3, essential ceramide in our skin lipid layer along with glycerin, niacinamide, and the prebiotic thermal spring water that helps to support and hydrate the skin. Now this one, I think there can be many ways of using this one. You can just use this as your morning and evening cleanser or say you're used to using a foaming cleanser in the morning, swap that one out for this one. Or like if you double cleanse, that could be a great second step to double cleansing. If you're looking for another great option in a creamy cleanser, I also recommend the one from CRV, their hydrating facial cleanser that's very similar and not it's not foamy and personal hydration is pretty effective for kind of simple you know skincare light makeup at removing that the sebum the impurities and the debris and this one also contains three essential ceramides along with hyaluronic acid the next cleanser is one that I absolutely have been loving. I've been using exclusively in the shower and I'm almost done. And it's from La Roche-Posay, their newest launch, their Lipicar AP Gentle Foaming Cleansing Oil. This is really nice because it's got wonderful hydrating ingredients, but foams ever so slightly. So for those individuals who just absolutely need a foaming cleanser in their routine, this would be one to consider when switching to for the winter. And not only that, it can be used on face and body and that's what I do in the shower. I use it on my kids as well. So it's really truly multifunctional and the light foam really gives you kind of that clean feel but also has really nice nourishing ingredients to help hydrate the skin and not overstrip the skin barrier. And this one is even suitable for kids, babies two weeks and older and can even be used on their scalp to help remove dead skin and cradle cap. Ingredient wise, again, it contains La Roche-Posay's thermal spring water along with shea butter that we know is a wonderful emollient, helps to smooth down skin, helps to add nourishment to the skin, niacinamide, glycerin. So just all wonderful ingredients that really helps to support the skin barrier gets the job done without being overly aggressive. And the fact that it can be used everywhere and pretty much on everyone in the household. So just like a one-stop shop cleanser, great for winter. Tip four is apply moisturizer on damp skin. So moisturizers, even, even though the name implies that it's supposed to add hydration to the skin, it is more effective, or I should say the most effective at reducing trans epidermal water loss and really relies on kind of pulling water from deeper parts of the skin to top layer of the skin and reducing dryness. And this is why as dermatologists, we always recommend you hear us say, you know, after coming out of the shower, pat your skin dry and within that first 30 seconds or so before your skin is completely dry, when it is still damp, seal in all the hydration with a moisturizer. Your skin is gonna be able to stay hydrated longer and the moisturizer is gonna be able to more work more effectively. This is also the reason why if you ever notice a difference, you know, moisturizing dry skin versus damp skin, that hydration component is more effective and more long lasting when you do it on damp skin than dry skin. So yeah, always moisturize on damp skin to get the full benefit from a moisturizer. Tip five is upgrade to a richer cream. And this is where I've talked about before, we change our clothes depending on the season. We should also change our skincare products like changing from a foaming cleanser to a creamy one, going from a lighter lotion gel cream to a thicker cream-based moisturizer. Reason being is that creams, thicker creams, have more occlusives and emollients that really reduce trans epidermal water loss, thereby keeping our skin hydrated and 
keeping it hydrated for a longer period of time and making your skin feel more supported throughout the day. And so this is really helpful if you have dry skin and or want to continue using some of the actives like retinoids and exfoliants that we know are more irritating and even more so during the winter. That way it will allow you to be more consistent with your skincare routine as well. And for product recommendations, the first one is a little bit splurgy, but really worth it. Great for those with more mature, dry skin, or it would make a great gift. It's SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore. So this actually has a two for two ratio of ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids that is uniquely formulated to really help target mature dry skin because as we age the lipid profile in our skin also changes and so this moisturizer is meant to do that support our skin in that way it is a rich cream and they've actually done studies showing that this moisturizer has shown to reduce irritation like that retinization period when our skin is first starting a topical retinoid and reducing the dryness and irritation really allowing one to tolerate a topical retinoid more readily it does contain essential oil so be careful if you're sensitive to that it may not be the best thing or you may want to test it out and I love using this great for morning and evening but this would make a lovely nighttime moisturizer especially if you want to continue using your topical retinoid can add additional benefits or improve the dryness and irritation from topical retinoid use next product something more affordable is from CeraVe moisturizing cream and this is just such a wonderful product and I've recommended for over 15 years and I continue to recommend because it is just that good. It is a thick cream that's nourishing, but it's non-greasy, fast absorbing, great for all skin types during the winter time, but especially if you have dry skin, eczema prone skin, and sensitive skin. It is suitable to use on face and body, so literally one stop shop. Two, it's fragrance free and it's accepted by the National Eczema Association. And this has three essential ceramides that we know is really the core of CeraVe's products along with hyaluronic acid that helps to hydrate and petrolatum that makes a great occlusive to reduce trans epidermal water loss. And what is unique to all of CeraVe's products is it's formulated not just with those ingredients but in a unique packaging system called MVE multivesicular emotion technology but basically you can think of it as all the active ingredients are like packaged into a little tiny vehicles within the cream or the product and then when it's applied on the skin it is slowly released into your skin over time so it basically is more gentle but also delivers better hydrating moisturizing results over time to keep your skin hydrated throughout the day so i love it for the formula i love it for the technology and it's just like i said a great product all around for everyone for the entire family if you're looking for a moisturizer that's even creamier then i recommend checking out la roche posay's lipicar ep plus m and this is one that we use in our family during the winter for a few reasons number one it's a nourishing cream that is really moisturizing but not super greasy heavy or thick it comes in a pump that's really easy to dispense making bath time routines when you have little kids so much more convenient I love it for the formula and because we have dry eczema prone skin, this moisturizer has actually been studied clinically to help improve the skin microbiome that we know is disrupted in eczema prone skin, helping to heal and soothe eczema prone skin, which is what myself and my daughter and my son actually struggle with. Basically everybody in my family aside from my husband. And the ingredients are really fascinating. So number one, it contains La Roche Posay's thermal spring water that we know really helps to support healthy skin microbiome. You've got your you know nourishing ingredients like ceramides, ceramide three, shea butter, and then niacinamide that helps again support skin barrier and then glycerin that is a great humectant. Now what's most fascinating, it's a postbiotic ingredient and it's called Aqua Pose Filiformis. And this is basically a byproduct of a gram negative bacteria that uniquely thrives in La Roche Posay's thermal spring water. And it's super fascinating because in clinical study, what they did is they swabbed the skin before putting on this moisturizer, healthy skin and eczema prone skin, like affected by eczema, use this moisturizer for 28 days and then we swabbed both areas. And what they've shown is number one, before use, we know there is a disbalance of the skin microbiome on eczema prone skin. But after 20 days of use, that disbalance actually starts to revert back to what you typically would see in healthy skin. So this moisturizer 
like I said, I really recommend it for those with dry skin, but especially if you are prone to eczema and struggle with eczema, this can be a very helpful part of the eczema skincare routine along with prescription medications. Tip number six is consider including ointments and balms in your routine. So as I mentioned earlier, when it's so dry and cold, sometimes moisturizers are just not enough to seal in all of that water and reduce transepidermal water loss. And this is where going with something that's super occlusive, like 100% petrolatum or ultra thick balm, where you need it all or all over as needed can be really helpful to repair your skin, reduce dry flaky skin. And especially for kids that struggle with eczema, I tell parents, and parents do love this even though it's kind of messy, but in the evening it is great. Just aquaphor or petrolatum as your moisturizer to just coat all over the skin can be super helpful. And like, like I said, really helps to repair the skin, soothe the skin, especially in dry and eczema prone skin. 100% petrolatum is the most occlusive and studies have shown that petrolatum really helps to repair and initiate skin repair kind of at all levels of the skin. So it is just great. And you know, we know it doesn't contain fragrance, it's inert, so really ideal for those with dry and sensitive skin too. Now how to do it, how to slug, basically after cleansing, I recommend putting on a moisturizer to damp skin to add hydration. It's gonna be the first layer to really reduce transepidermal water loss. And then you're gonna just slug everywhere or where you need to, to kind of be that last step to seal everything in and kind of film that protective layer to help your skin heal and keep it hydrated, say as you sleep overnight. Now, if petrolatum is too thick or if you want to slug but worry about acne, then consider going with like say a repair balm. One that I've recommended before I've talked about is from a La Roche-Posay, their Cycloplast B5. And this is a rich creamy balm, but it actually absorbs super quickly. It's really lightweight and leaves minimal residue or tackiness on the skin. So this is really ideal if you have oily skin and the areas that you want to slug or repair, you can put this all over your face. It is pretty heavy though, but like to spot treat areas where you need to can be really helpful. And ironically, people have reported reported this to be helpful for their acne and think in part is number one, you are supporting and repairing your skin barrier. And two, the ingredients in here are anti-inflammatory and soothing and calming. So it can certainly be helpful for most skin types. And just highlighting some of the unique ingredients aside from the vitamin B5 and shea butter and glycerin, it contains centella derivatives along with zinc and copper that we know are anti-inflammatory that are soothing and helps skin barrier repair along with antimicrobial agents. So all around, I think this is a great one if you want to do like a little bit of slugging, help to repair the skin, but are oily skin or prone to acne, this would be a great alternative to petrolatum. Tip seven is incorporate that skin trend, skin flooding. So basically this is where you are flooding your skin with hydrating products to really lock in that moisture and keep your skin hydrated and plump. And that is what skin flooding is. This is a new trend that we see in 2023 that really is one that I recommend carrying over into 2024 because the focus is really keeping your skin moisture barrier hydrated healthy and happy. And how you do it is actually fairly simple, even though this trend and name may sound kind of complicated or fancy, but essentially you are just applying hydrating products and layering them to keep your skin hydrated and then seal in that hydration. So basically what you wanna do is after cleansing when your skin is still damp, apply a hydrating serum, ideally with like hyaluronic acid or glycerin, niacinamide, something that really helps to hydrate and support your skin moisture barrier. I really love Vichy Mineral 89 Hydrating Serum. This is a great one because it has pure hyaluronic acid, contains Vichy's volcanic water that we know has anti-inflammatory and soothing properties, but also is fragrance free and has been tested in over thousands of patients to help strengthen the, and repair their skin barrier. So just a great hydrating serum for all skin types. You basically pump that onto your skin, apply it on damp skin, and then follow it with a moisturizer before that fully dries to really lock everything in. And so that is really essentially it to skin flooding. You're just basically adding in all these hydrating products to keep your skin glowy and plump and hydrated and really reduce flaking and dryness. 
Tip eight is incorporate skin cycling into your routine. Another trend that I absolutely love. So skin cycling, if you guys are not familiar, is essentially you're cycling through the actives in your routine on a weekly basis and while taking breaks. So that way you can really maximize the benefits while reducing irritation, allowing you to be more consistent with your skincare routine. Now, there are just so many different ways of doing skin cycling and the one um, that Dr. Whitney Bow really is the one who kind of coined this term. She described it as like using retinoid one night, chemical exfoliant the other, and then taking two nights of rest and then basically redoing everything. Now, I have been doing skin cycling for many years now. And basically what I do is I use my topical retinoid and then alternate a couple times a night during the week with a chemical exfoliant and then taking one night with no actives as breaks if I need to. Now, how you do that really depends on you, what you want to do. You can do every other night if you would like, or, you know, so it's just find a routine that works for you. But essentially, you just are alternating your actives and not using them in the same routine or the same day, I should say, to avoid irritation. And again, maximizing your routine so that way you can get good results and use them consistently and reduce irritation, which can often be really tough during the winter. Tip nine is lip care. Don't neglect your lips. And chapped lip is definitely something that we struggle with too in the winter time. And I am constantly applying something on my lips like every half an hour to just keep it soft and hydrated and not dry and cracked. So this is where if you're in the habit of using like fragrance chapstick, just that, go with something simple like 100% petrolatum that is safe, that is more effective at keeping your lips soft and hydrated. Aquaphor is great too, or like a fragrance-free lip balm, you know, that is just convenient to carry around. I've talked about it actually in my recent lip care video. I'll link that below, but check that one out if you're looking for lip-specific products, along with other hacks to keep your lip hydrated and soft and less dry. But yes, do not neglect your lips. The easiest, like I said, the safest is just petrolatum and just have something in your pocket, in your bag, so that way you can easily grab and put on as you need. Last but not least, don't neglect your hands. I often find that the first place to manifest dry skin is actually on my hands in the winter time because of all the hand washing that I and we do on a regular basis. And over time, that can thicken the skin, leading to cracks and fissures, as well as calluses, you know, fissure fingertips that can be very painful, along with the rough cuticles and brittle nails. So the easiest thing to do is to immediately moisturize your hands after hand washing and do this with each hand wash. Another trick is Put moisturizers, like half the small tubes of them laying around your house, in your purse, at your office. That way you can easily grab and use. Another trick I really love is using a pair of cotton gloves and really take advantage of when you sleep at night to help repair your hands. And so basically you put on your moisturizer and can even occlude that with, you know, petrolatum, so hand slugging, and then put a pair of cotton gloves on. That basically forms an extra seal to keep everything in and included. And when you sleep in that overnight, you will wake up the next day with super soft hands like a baby's bottom. You can do this with your feet with cotton, a pair of cotton socks as well. And this really helps to quickly turn around and repair like fissures on the fingertips. Now, as far as moisturizers, any moisturizers is just fine. But if you're looking for like a hand specific one, one that comes to mind that is really nice is from Eucerin, their advanced repair hand cream that is a really hydrating, moisturizing, but fast absorbing and leaves minimal residue. So that way after using it, you don't leave imprints of things that you touch with your hands. Ingredient wise, it contains ceramide three, essential ceramide that really helps to restore our skin barrier along with alpha hydroxy acid that can gently exfoliate, helps to hydrate at the same time and reduce the buildup of dead skin that may contribute to thickened skin that can easily crack. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that any moisturizer that contains alpha hydroxy acid, if you put on skin that has pre-existing cracks and fissures, it will burn temporarily. So just be careful of that. Otherwise, this is a great one to have on hand to use regularly to keep the skin on your hands soft and hydrated. All right, guys, so that is my 10 tips for keeping your skin healthy and hydrated during the winter. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or what other winter skincare tips and hacks you want me to share. Again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.